sometimes my glasses get on my nerve. Found them at a thrift store, and let me say, I was glad that I did. This is my actual medicine. I thought that was dope. Anyways, though. So now that I showed you how people play these games that they shouldn't be playing that I talk about all the time. Like, I really talk about it a lot. It should really enlighten you a little further about that which what I post and whose videos I share that are very accurate to the situation at hand. Mm -hmm. So I survived targeting like that, right? Um, I survived a lot of death plots. I survived targeting, exploitation, human trafficking, sexual assault. Look at me, thriving and whatnot. Hmm? Still letting you know that I'm still about my business by posting my business. What you see me post about my business is what I'm doing currently. Okay? Kinky sensations is not being ran by me. I must reiterate that to you so that way you're fully aware that the people who are running it are the ones who have to. And the ones that need to be napped as well. My little businesses that I have to restart. I'm on my new thing right now. New beginnings, new me, new this, new that, right? Yeah. Anyways, one thing about me is I'm never going to beg. But I'm always going to show you my work. I'm always going to be about my business. And if you would like to support, you could support like that. Purchasing something. Okay? That way you benefit from it as well. You don't feel like you're dealing with a charity case. Because although the situation is severe in nature, and very severe in nature, I refuse to be punked by anybody. I refuse to stop creating. I refuse to stop building. I refuse to stop being about my business. All right. It's not it's not in me to be a quitter. I wasn't born one. I was born a fighter. Can't you tell? I've been through a lot, and still, I'm not broken. Although there are many who want me to be as broken as they want me to be. My God, it really breaks your nutsacks and your panty liners, bitch, about me. Because I refuse to be like anybody else that you've done this to. And that's something. When you just won't buckle down, you won't get on your knees, you won't say, baby, please, fuck you. Okay. You hurt. Anyway, it's on. Never in my life did I ever think that an ex, his new bitch, his new baby mama, or a neighbor, for that matter, Joe, like what? Joseph would allow some dumb shit like what I just showed you with the whole spray paint situation and the whole lake house situation movie in real life happening but in targeted ways It's clear that I ain't built like anything you've ever seen or anyone you've ever seen before. I'm real rare, and I'm definitely not from here, as it seems. I'm real alien-like, and I don't mean illegal, okay? 
shout out to all my immigrants. That wasn't a shot to you. It's a shot to the bitch who thinks she's going to be playing with my life and I'm going to be quiet about it. And you know what's worse is that they married into or have children by my family members and you know, whatever like that or in relationship with my family members. And that's how they do their little sneaky things. And let me tell you something, Crystal. What? Medici? Medici. You're a nurse or something like that? Yeah. North Dakota, Oklahoma, some shit like that. You pulled it yesterday, that little box that Darnell bought with the crock pot, the little light blue coffee mug, I mean, Stanley cup, that's missing a piece to the Stanley. So it's like, it's just a big ass cup now at this point. Anyways, and the little white and gold cup too. On the box, it had the address of a destiny Medina. Now, Darnell bought this box from somebody that he knew while I was buying me a coffee at the Dunkin' Donuts. The same Dunkin' Donuts that that pest control, alchemy pest control that's ran by people involved in the situation. That's right, bitch. You ousted. Danielle, what are you calling yourself? Perry? Yeah, yeah. Um, license plate number started with a 22. And yeah, I gladly took a picture of that. I didn't drink my coffee that day. Because, bitch, you feel like I'm a pest. And you thought that you were going to control me. And I don't even trust nobody. Not even with my coffee. I didn't drink my coffee that day. Because I knew something wasn't right. And when I looked up who ran the company, I knew I was right. So that says a lot. It says that you should stop fucking playing with me. That's what the fuck it says. It says that you have overdone your bullshit. It says that you are caught. It says that you should have stopped. Bad enough you took me to 30 Wayne, right? And then 31, 32, rain one, in Newark, right? And I found out who was in there, right? Then I started ousting you there. I don't even know why the fuck you play with me at this point. I ain't none of them. I'm me. I'm definitely me. I'm definitely different. I know that I'm not like anybody else, okay? I'm strange to most, weird to others, and amazing to a lot more. So don't fucking play with me. I'm not a little kid. I'm my father's child for sure. But I'm a grown ass woman. A mother. At that. And definitely a fighter. So don't you never get me mistaken. Because I'm not here to play with you. And I was never a part of your damn game. And since you want to force your stupid ass game on me. Your violation, your menacing, and all that other stupid shit. Sarah Deja, you want a Netflix special, bitch? How about we build a Netflix special about how Rosita conquered over a lot of people who targeted her and work in a lot of places? Some are nurses, some are surgeons, some are doctors, some are lawyers, some are dental hygienists. Some's are regular Joe Smoke contractors, construction workers, EMTs, firefighters, ex firefighters. Hello, Mr. Carlos Lopez. Darnell made sure that he strolled me on past your house yesterday. You're an ex firefighter, right? Mr. Carlos, I still have a couple of your items. Say a little blue notebook. With a bunch of numbers on it. Mm. Something about a a rehab center, a village, 
in Florida. So not only am I getting attacked by regular Joe Schmoes, but actual addicts or recovering addicts. And some people who were addicts, they just, you know, uh, took the opportunity that was given to them and targeting and robbing me and trying to set me up for failures, trying to keep me bound in economic slavery. That, when you look that up, that is a 20 to life sentence. And I can prove that you did it. Who you think you punked? Who? It's not me. I got you wrapped around my finger. And I got your life sentence in my pocket. So who wants to keep playing that game? Who wants to keep staying loyal to something that's going to put you away for life? I never wanted to be in your punk ass circle because I knew the consequences that came with that when it was offered in the first place. You little Polly want to crack her ass bitches. Ladies and gentlemen, when the women of these men confront the women that they want to potentially add to this little Holly Wanna Cracker group. It's a it's pretty amazing. And I'm gonna tell you what, I was flattered in the beginning and I did say, Oh, thank you, but no thank you. I'm not into that. Darnell, who is my husband wanted me to be a part of that because he wanted three wives and I'm like why the fuck would I want you to have three wives like come on now you can't handle the one you got I'm more than a handful as you can see it depends on how you play with my petals or get pricked by my thorns because I'm not going to be a pushover I'll be meek I'm submissive to a man that I can submit to okay not one who wants to control me or add me to a bunch of poly wanna cracker ass bitches who are jealous of me and want me to and do things to get rid of me because they know that the person that they probably and want to crack her with wants me. And that got a sting. They know that in order for him to have me, he'd have to leave all of them alone. Because this queen, aka my daddy's princess, okay, not, not no sugar daddy, so my actual father, you understand? This man right here, see? And yeah. Hey, Dad. Up, I mean, up in the skies. My bad. I was snitching a little bit. Maybe I was. Maybe I wasn't. I don't know. Anyways. <laughs> Regardless of what, I'm a grown-ass woman. When they offered it to me, God bless the babies. Little babies passing by. I love me the babies. But anywho, Michelle asked me, Maria asked me, the other Maria asked me, the other one asked me, like, Jennifer asked me. Mine's like, no, no thank you. Oh, LaDonna asked me. Mine's like, no thank you. Um, I like to keep it friends. I don't want to do none of that. I don't want to be a part. That's not my life. I'm strictly a, you know, like, I only want one man. And I only want one man to want me. So, like, 
I don't like to share. I'm not a sharer of, of men. I don't I don't like to share. Okay. And evidently, they didn't like to share neither. Or they didn't like the idea that I didn't like to share. Okay. And one person said that I was fucking up the money. And she refused to allow me to mess with her cash cow. And which was which was amazing because I was being called the cash cow too there, Michelle and Crystal. Who the fuck told you I was a cow? I'm not even fat. I'm not even fat. I'm lit. I'm a little thicky. Now, yeah, I was bony as hell. I was looking bulimic because people were poisoning my food and drink. They gave me fentanyl. They put a chicken bone like that, two of them in my rice, had Darnell send it into me. If I would have ate that damn rice, it was just supposed to be plain rice. If I would have ate that rice, I wouldn't have known that the chicken bone was deep into the rice. So if I would have swallowed it, I would have choked. And let me tell you something, right? Mr. Harris, Mr. Gary Harris, guess how they told me he died, right? Okay. My daughter gave me this pendant after. They said that um, allegedly he died. Okay, I don't know because I didn't go to the funeral. Right? And, you know, when I look him up, you know, it's a lot of interesting things about that their story. That's why I say allegedly so, that. Because if I ever find out that, that you faked it, that, and you allow people to do me dirty, that, Including your sister's dad. I'm going to fuck something up. Okay? Okay? I'm speaking specifically to Gary Harris Sr. Specifically. They're Nigel Brown and friends. Now, there are stories about people faking it. Thank you. Stories about people faking it because they want to get away or get, get to safety. They even do that to people in witness protection programs. So I understand. But what I don't rock with is when you pretend or fake your death to harass somebody like the movie Double Jeopardy. The only difference is, in Double Jeopardy, she had to spend some time in prison for a death that never happened and a murder that she never committed. So when he came around thinking he was going to be Mr. Creepazoid and fuck with her, you know, with people thinking that he's dead. So if she was to say something, they wouldn't believe her because he's supposed to be dead. Come on, you catching me right now? You with me? Are you with me? So she does everything in her power to clear her name and to the point where if she actually did finish him, she wouldn't be charged because she already did the time. And you can't charge someone twice for the same crime. Especially if you were supposed to already be dead. Excuse me, the new word. I gotta get with the program, my bad. Unalived. Bad. Anyway, you get what I'm saying though. In real life, that happens. In real life, a couple, a husband, faked his death. He went fake ground somewhere, right? And was gone for five years, hiding in a motherfucking attic. His wife knew about it. His kids didn't. 
They tried to go to Costa Rica or some shit like that, Guatemala, something like that. What happened? He couldn't get his passport to go there. Something about the signatures had to be a certain kind of way. The picture had to be, I don't fucking know. Look it up, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not lying to you. I'm, I'm educating you. There's a difference. But yeah. So, uh, oh yeah, by the way, don't don't be trying to um, hit me with the bullshit of there's music playing in the background because I'm outside. Okay, I can't help with nobody blasting around these parts. Okay, but let's get that clear. But anyways, back to it. Um, this actual couple, when the husband couldn't go and the wife ended up somewhere, but they took pictures somewhere. They took pictures over there. Actually went. Let me correct it. They actually got to go, but something about the visa changed. So he had to come back to the States. What he did, he went to the police station and claimed he had am fucking amnesia. Okay. Amnesia. Okay. Everybody catch amnesia, right, French? That's what French that's what French is rapping in his song, French Montana. Hello, how are you? All right there now. Anyways. That video that he made is something. That video also shows how people sold themselves for certain things. I'm not saying that that's what French did. I'm saying that people I actually know did. So they can be popular, so they can have clout, so they can be known, so they can be this and that. I left online for a while. Okay. And during that time, it gave people the opportunity to become me, steal identities, play my information, play my social security card, play my birth certificate, not just women, but males too. Okay. That's why some people was asking me if I was a whole man out here. I'm sitting here like I got four fucking kids, bitch. I am not no man. I'm a woman. I'm not a drag queen. I don't even wear makeup barely. Like. I wear makeup when I want to. I don't need to. That's the difference. That's, that's, I hope we, we gather that. But let me get back to this, this man who went to the precinct, claimed he had amnesia, and then they found out that he faked his death and that he was living in his attic at his house for five years, and his kids didn't even know about that. So the kids disowned him, and him and his wife went and spent a little time in prison. Um, he got out before her. The reason why they went to prison is because they pulled an insurance scam. Faked his death so he can get the insurance money. Anyway, yes. he remarried, and his wife never did. That's the story. Look it up. You can Google it. It's, it's really there. There's another man who was a rapist. He was a child molester, shit like that. Um, He faked his death same way. Like, he drowned. Bye, 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 bitch. He was due to be indicted and sentenced to a 30-year prison sentence. But he tried to fake it so he can get out of the 30-year prison sentence. And they caught his ass. And I think he was from Jersey, too. Y'all so whack. You see how I mind my business. I'm going to tell you how I mind my business. I don't get into all of that. There are some people who do it for protective reasons. And then there are some who fake it to be doing it in harassing, menacing ways. Where it makes a person feel like they're going crazy because the person is supposed to be dead, not alive. And faking it to harass you menace you to target you to even try to kill you to keep the fact that they're pretending to be dead a secret now I'm teaching you a lot of game right look at that ain't nothing fake about me cause as you can see I was talking to my own dad The reason why that is, is because before my dad allegedly passed away, July this month, 17th, then his death certificate says he died July, I mean, August 19th. B 
before his alleged passing. He asked me, um, well, he told me he had 30 grand to give me. He wanted to give me 30 grand. But before he gave me the 30 grand, he wanted to know what I would do with that money. And this is also before I knew I was making a whole lot of money. I didn't know off my platforms and people were making money exploiting me. I didn't know that either, but that was around the same time. Anyways, he asked me, what would I do with that 30 grand? And I said, I would put it towards my business that I got so many businesses I can choose from that I can put that money towards to finish building my brands because I got a lot of brands that I have a lot of creations. I have a lot of things that I have not put out yet that I am an asset. I am the bank. As long as you're always creating something, you'll never be broke. You also have to watch the company that you keep, the people that you trust, and the people that you teach. Anything about your business. And that includes family. That includes those fake ass friends, those fake associates, those people that you trust. When I told my dad that, he said, okay, okay. So, um, and we're on the phone. He's supposed to be down south, and I'm up in Jersey. And I'm talking to him on, on my mother's phone. He said, actually, it was this day that he said it. July 12th. He said... We'll talk about this further when I come up to see you. I'm coming up there soon. Your Aunt BJ is sending me a, a plane ticket up there so I can come and see you guys. I want to see my grandkids because he's never met my grandkids. He's only spoken to them over the phone. Right. Well, he's never met his grandkids, not my grandkids. Well, he's never met my grandkids either because I'm a grandmother too and proud of it. Okay, well, look at me. Sexy grandma. Any year. Mm-hmm. He said he was coming to see me. A few weeks later. That became a nightmare to me because I had someone on the phone after he sent the text message that said, call me ASAP. I still have the number that he called me from, so I know who the phone belongs to. And it's a female, right? Yeah, I know I'm fucking right. Don't play with me, bitch. Anyways. He said, call him ASAP. I call that phone number. A man picks up the phone who is not my dad, doesn't sound like my dad, didn't answer like my dad would answer. And I'm like, can I speak to Gary? And he's like, I'm sorry, but your dad just, your, da your dad died. I dropped to the floor. I lost my mind. I just lost my stepdad who raised me and my other stepdad who raised me. And now my dad. Back to back. Back to back. Oh, and my uncle. And a year later, my little brother, Eddie. That's a lot. You don't think? 
look at me, standing strong, able to verbalize what I've been through, how I felt about it. Ain't shit crazy about me. And I won't allow anyone to try to project this and that about me. You gonna get in line and get it straight about me, bitch. And we gonna make that real clear today. Hello, feds. Hello, CIA. Hello, U.S. Marshal. Hello, officers with your fine selves. It only is, bro. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're all being safe. I pray that you are all being safe in the line of work that you do. But back to it. So the man, I after I gather myself from all that hollering and screaming and crying that I was doing and shaking and, and just in disbelief, my dad. You telling me my dad is gone? He just told me a few weeks before that he was on his way to see me. I said to him, what happened? He said, he choked from a bone in his throat. It is 5.30 in the morning. I said, he texted me. It was like maybe 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Time passed before I got the message. So I'm calling. I'm like, man, I'm sorry, Dad. I, I wish I would have got the message sooner. And what do you mean he died from a bone in his throat? How do you know? that he died from a bone in his throat. Like, don't motherfuckers understand that I'm an investigator? I investigate. That is my nature. That is my birth sign. That is, like, I'm a law. I'm, I really am. I really the fuck am. I don't be playing about this shit. I be serious. The Rose wanted to be a cop. And a lot of my tutors and mentors and People who gave me guidance are law officials. So don't even play with me like that. Don't even do it. And I, and I hold them in high regard and respect, okay? Because they taught me a lot. And they kept me grounded. And I respect them. Okay? All right. Back to it. I start questioning. How, how, how did he die from a bone in his throat? What do you mean a bone in his throat? Well, what happened? He said he died, uh, and then he was choking on the bone, and it took 20 minutes for anybody to come and help him. So he died from a bone in his throat, and it took people 20 minutes. This is the story. This is the line. This is the, you know. It fucked with me. Only for motherfuckers to try that bone shit on me six months later. So what the fuck did my father have, right? What did he receive, first of all? Because where you get 30 grand from, Dad? I never questioned him. I just was like, oh, like, I don't, thanks, Dad. You never gave me anything. You weren't around all my life. We only spoke through phone and letters. But I respected that. And I still learned from all of that. But what the fuck did my father get? That you tried to end my life so I don't get it. Huh? And in the same fashion... That he allegedly died with the chicken bone. Now, mind you, I have that video of the chicken bone that the, that Darnell came in there, brought with the fucking bowl and all that bullshit of rice. It was plain rice because I wasn't eating meat. Okay? I have refused to eat meat after the whole poisoning thing. 
and whatnot like that. So it was plain white rice inside a styrofoam bowl. Actually, it was a cardboard bowl, like the little containers. Okay, white rice. My son found that bone first because I shared the rice with him. Darnell didn't know that I wasn't home alone. He thought I was home alone. The only person that was in the house at the time was my son, King. So, King was in there asleep. And I woke him up and asked him if he wanted some of the rice. He said, okay. Darnell had left by this time. That's how true this shit is. Okay, you gonna understand let me give you a minute for this to pass. This is a traumatizing story. So excuse me, I need to calm myself as I say. And while I'm saying, just know that my story never changed. Because I never needed to lie. It was always the truth. On with it. I gave my son a bowl he brought to me. So I poured some of the rice inside of it. Scooped it with a spoon. So he went in his room with the bowl. Come back to me. He's like, Mom, what's this? Uh, I said, I don't know, what is it? So he showed it to me. He said, this was in, in the rice. I said, what was in the rice? So he was like this, I almost choked on it. Darnell, you brought a container of rice with two pieces of bones that come from wing tips. If you fry up a chicken wing, you take the wing tip apart, those bones that I show you in the videos prior, you only get one of those bones in each wing tip. There's only one of those bones. So you pick two fucking chicken wings tips. Pick those specific fucking bones. Put it in the motherfucking rice and brought it into me. When I talk about this shit to Darnell, do you know what he said to me? Well, if it was only one chicken bone, only you would have died, not King. That's what he said. That's what the fuck he said. Anyways. I had to remind him that it wasn't one, it was two bones. Just like when that girl fentanyl laced me, she said I was going to need two hits. I didn't know what the fuck she was talking about. We were only smoking. The bitch laced me with fentanyl. This is how badly these motherfuckers wanted me out of here. Because I was talking a lot of truth, revealing a lot of shit. That'll make a motherfucker real uncomfortable. That's why I tell you bitches. Get real uncomfortable. Because I told you to stop fucking with me. I am not your target. Now you are mine. You are my target. Until I get my justice. And what I mean by target is I'm exposing your ass. For them to come and collect your ass. For them to investigate every fucking thing about you. Every nook and cranny down to your fucking shoestrings. You dirty bitch. Okay, Lisa? All right. Back to the rice. So I goes in my bowl. I'm confused that he got a bone in his. I said, why, the, why do you got a bone in your food if, if you're in your rice, if it's only rice? It's not nothing in there but rice. I said, you sure you got that out the out that bowl? He said, yeah, mom. I start digging in mine. I didn't even get the bite into my food yet. I start picking through the rice and I find 
the second bone, which was bigger than the other bone. Okay, the other bone was kind of slit in the middle. So if he would have tried to breathe that motherfucker up, it would have broke in his throat. You think that shit is funny, bitch? It's not funny to me. That's why I say fuck all y'all. You not only tried to hurt me, bitch, but you could have hurt my son. And it would have been what? What would have been the story? You know, because a lot of, some of the people involved are uh, crime scene investigators. Ex-crime scene investigators. Who helped? Now you gonna stop fucking playing with me, bro. I'm a different kind of Alicia Keys. I will air your motherfucking secrets if you do me dirty, bitch. And that's what the fuck you did. So that's what the fuck I'm doing. Write that down. You came against the wrong one. When I picked through that rice, I found that second bone. I call his father. And I'd say, Darnell, why'd you bring me a rice container? You said it was only rice, but it was two chicken bones in there. And King almost choked on it. He said, I didn't know. It was two bones in there? Oh, I would have died a mysterious death, if uh, uh, accidental death. That's what they were planning for me. Accidental death, mysterious death, a death, an accident, a car accident. Like, they were staging car accidents. Staging car accidents, damn it. Nicole, Michelle Lee. Asia Crawford, you bitch, you two bitches, were involved in a staged accident. Now my name is Rosita Crawford in Florida, cause you played in my identity. And my attorney was cross helping your ass. And I didn't find that till after the court proceedings were over with Michael, he made trust accounts that's what I'm talking about in my name he bought something paid paid for a fucking house $10,000 down so I'm thinking he paid that damn $10,000 down on that house because he knew about the damn he knew about the stalking he knew about the harassment he knew about people playing in my name and I told him this I even recorded it Michael just in case so don't even do it I've always recorded every fucking conversation I had with you jokers and I'm glad I fucking did I'm glad I did I recorded every finding that I found out. Nina Patterson, she's supposed to be an attorney too. Now let's get back to Michael. I did not know that Michael, I thought Michael was just an accident lawyer. Come to find out, he was never an accident lawyer. He was a fucking criminal defense lawyer. And this is why Darnell would say, I would offer motherfucker and then I'll get away with it because I know a lawyer that'll get me out of it. Who, Michael? Because Michael about to go to fuck the jail. Fucking with me. Yes, sir. You can write that down. And any fucking other lawyer there, Alexander. Because if you weren't on my side and you were doing shit that was against me and to plot on me and to do plans and, and all of this set up shit, then you can take your ass to prison and sit there, bitch, just like you wanted me to sit in a goddamn grave. You thought this shit was a game and I'm here to let you know I am your karma, bitch. For all the shit that you did, all the stunts that you pulled, being greedy, Taking billions of fucking dollars and splitting it. That belong to me. You think I'ma let shit slide? No, I don't think so. I don't I don't know anybody who would. 
I don't know anybody who would let some shit like that slide. No, you like playing in PayPal accounts. My business that's that's hacked is attached to my PayPal account. My PayPal account, for some fucking reason or another, is attached to Darnell Harrell Jr. It states that he owns KinkySensations.com, in which case he's never owned it because it's always belonged to me. I am the sole proprietor of that brand. Write it down. I love speaking my truth because I never have a reason to lie. My truth is better than any fucking lie anybody's ever told on me or spoke on my body. And you could write that down too. You owe me a lot more than you took and it's going to cost you a lot more than you took as far as consequences are concerned. This you know, and this is why you try to do that bullshit that I showed y'all with those motherfucking spray paint signs on the brick wall trying to get me to see it like the lake house. I pray that you understand how important that which what I'm teaching you today that what I am enlightening you on today because it's real important. It's a lot of people. There's a lot of innocent people going through a lot of similar situations such as what I am going through and have been through and survived from. Their voices are not heard. Some of them are afraid to speak. Some of them are really scared. Some of them are embarrassed. Some of them internalize it and feel like it was their fault or they deserved it. You didn't deserve that. I didn't deserve that. You know how many times people use my my likeness, my image? Just to build their brand? even down to the radio station. When somebody was getting ready to abduct me, kidnap me, to have me trafficked, I was at Keller, was Kessler Rehabilitation Center. Darnell was being in the rehabilitation thing doing therapy and I was sitting outside. I'm sitting by this little uh, ravine, this little stream or something i'm standing there and i'm crying because i'm going through a lot next door to it is is a hotel across the street from this place this is in west orange orange something like that wherever the north turtleback i mean the turtleback zoo is because it's across from the turtleback zoo and across from that a sheriff was parked outside okay a man pulls up in the parking lot, because that's where I was in the parking lot, just staring at this stream crying. The man goes to, he parks his car next to our car, and he says, he opens up his trunk, and he asks me, did I want a banana? He had the banana in his hand. I said, no, I don't want no banana. I'm wiping my tears and shit. Like, who is this weirdo asking me if I want a fucking banana? I look like a monkey to you. Huh? No, even Skip Marley says, banana is not fruit in his song. Hello, Skip Marley. Anyways, anyways, you listening? So he asked me if I wanted the damn banana. I said, no, thank you. He asked me, why was I crying? I said, nothing. Uh, I don't talk to strangers. He said, what is your name? I said, R. said R. I said, yeah, just R. He said, what's your name? 
I said, again, just are. And you see how people just copy your style? Because who's on the radio? Ever since I said that. Just Nick. Anyways, don't even get me started because I'll get started. Okay? But yeah, anyways, I got family members that work at the radio station. Some people own radio stations that are family members. Uh, I have family members that own studios, recording studios, music studios, that are involved with radio stations that I did not know were my family. Let's write that down. Okay, back to the story of the stranger with the banana asking me what the fuck my name is. So he asked me what my name is. Again, I said, just R, just R, okay? He said, okay, just art. Do you need a ride? I said, no, I don't need a ride. He said, you sure you don't want to get in? And he opened the passenger door and said, I think that you want to get in. And I said, I think not. Send a letter to your friend and tell him I'm not coming because I'm not getting in that car. And get away from me. Like, leave me alone. And I proceeded to be as tough as I can possibly be at that time. Like, Cause he was like short like me, but I ain't afraid to box your ass real quick. And I ain't said that I'm the best fighter in the motherfucking world, but bitch, I will out your eyes out. Okay, I will you know, take them out. Don't play with me. I will defend myself as I should. Okay. Anyway, he laughed at me. And was like, he's not being mean. He just wanted to know if I wanted a ride. He seen me crying. He was wondering what was wrong and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, I'm just cool. I'm cool and I'm chilling. I'm minding my business. He said, you don't look like you're chilling. You look sad. And he wasn't from here because he had an accent. An accent that I'm not familiar with. That part. Anyways. Light skinned pale man. Short. Anyways, I asked him to leave me alone. Another family comes, you know, standing by the the little water where I was standing, a, a father and a son. And then a lady passed through there. So when they started passing through, that was like my safety net because he got in his car and he bamoosed. He was gone. He was poof. Like a thief in the night. In the daytime. There's a song that says, I have your friends kidnap you in the daytime. I don't know if it's Lil' Kim said it or some shit like that or something like that. Some shit like that. But these people were trying to get rid of me. Like, really trying to get me to get in cars and and things like that. Like, I'm here to save you. I ain't getting in your shit. You ain't here to save me, motherfucker. You here to traffic me, bitch. And I ain't stupid. So we ain't with that. We ain't going with that. I'm not flying with that. I ain't even rolling with that. I ain't even getting on your boat with that shit. You can hang it up. It's done. It's finito. And I don't know who sent you, but that motherfucker should never send you again. Same year. I'm going to my chiropractor, which is in Newark, New Jersey. It's right by Penn Station. The driver that they had that's supposed to be their driver, acts, he's driving. First of all, he's drunk. He smells like liquor. The whole car smells like liquor. I don't even know why they sent him. But this guy is like, we get halfway there. We like maybe two, three blocks away from my destination. He wanted to detour me on that destination and asked me if I wanted to go left. And I'm like, nah, we need to go straight. He like, do you? are you sure you don't want to go on Washington? And I'm like, no, motherfucker, I don't want to go on Washington. This was right after the whole banana situation. I said, I don't know what nobody's trying, but don't play with me in here because we'll crash this motherfucking car and I'm not playing. Okay. What did he do? He said, oh, I'm just playing with you. I'm just playing with you. I said, get me to my destination. Get me to my doctor's appointment. And that's it. I don't know what's people's problem with. They think that, okay, you see me soft and tender. 
that you don't that that you think that I won't get on a billion about me. Cause I will. Okay, I'm not no punk. I'm not about to <laughs> save me. I'll take your head off. If it means protecting myself. I'm not the one that is like anybody else that's running and hiding and and seeking for a savior, Superman, fucking Spider-Man, Batman. Because even they turned into villains. You remember? You remember? I don't think Optimus turned into no damn villain. I don't know. I don't think so. I don't don't think so. I'm Bumblebee, though. And you know Bumblebee hard-headed as hell. Bumblebee don't even like to be bullied. Bumblebee gets to bumbling. Catch my drift. And this is why. God bless the baby. Hello, little snack. Anyways. I'm not a damsel in distress. I'm an innocent that was put through a whole lot of duress. There's a difference. And I'm an innocent that fights back. I'm of light. I'm not of darkness. Even when I'm sitting in the darkness, I still glow. You see me? Anyways. I'm a sun sun. Not a nighttime sun. I shed light. I speak truth to lies. I expose. I'm a little ray of sunshine. Right, right? (laughs) Flips hair. It ain't easy being me. I kind of understand what Kermit was going through. Look at you. You're such a blessing. God bless you, baby. Anyways. I don't like to be picked on. I don't. I don't like to be lied on. I don't. I don't like to be targeted because I'll tell who's targeting me. Now, I got a list of them. I'm ready to expose it. I am. Because you tried me, Michelle Crystal. You're a weak bitch. You are a fucking weak ass bitch. Like, what man really that, like, he think that's cute? Uh, I guess y'all together by blackmail because ain't no motherfucking way. If I was him, I would have been exited that motherfucking relationship. You would have been a tight ass bitch forever. I wouldn't care. I'm just not doing it. And I ain't letting you play about me. Or anybody that I love. I'm not letting you control me. I'm not letting a single ex think that he's controlling me. Not even through his rinky dink ass bitches. Uh, I like to say I'm the white boy from training day. The white officer. Because, you know, Denzel was wailing in that mother. King Kong ain't got shit on me. Like, what? <laughs> what did he do? He was on the news. Because he did way too much fuck shit. Shoot program. You program. You ain't programming me. No. And you see how he set up that officer? And he was a good guy. That's how people set me up. And I'm a good guy. I'm gonna cut this story time a little short. Save my battery. I might get on later, have a little live conversation. Share with you a little bit more about some more things. What I'm not gonna do though, it's lied to you. I've been lied on enough. And I feel like it's time to set the record straight. No remix. And you can play that shadow ban and shit. And you can try to say that I'm copywriting this and that. Like, how the hell do I keep getting copyright infringement of... Uh, uh, 
claims on my videos if there's nothing playing besides air. What? Then now you want to mess with my views because if you click on a video or before you click on a video, it says that nobody's seen it. It says no views. Then when you click on it, it's like four views. When we know that it's way more people that saw them videos than four people. And this is why I say to y'all, like my video so I know that you saw it. If you would like to, that would be nice because they're shadow banning the shit out of me for speaking. Tiffany Intuitive, hello, dear. You hello, spoke hello. on something in one of your videos today that was very, extremely accurate. I meant to share it. I said I was going to stop calling people's names and giving shout outs because some of these people are actually paid to say these things because they already know who's involved. But when I see that your, your platform is being played with, I know that you didn't sell your soul for nothing. That you stayed legit. That you're keeping it honest. I respect that more than I respect anything else about any fraud shit. Because I don't respect shit fraudulent. Look at all the fraud that was done on me. <laughs> Why would I? Why in the hell would I be accepting or allowing or condoning or co-signing some dumb shit? But Tiffany Intuitive, you uh, spoke on some things that were very true to my life at this point, right now. And the way you were setting it off today, I was loving it. Because somebody needs to say sorry. There's too many punks out here. I, I see that now. I'm like, damn, y'all scared of everything. I'm not. I'm going to stand for something. And I ain't falling for shit. I might stumble. I, I might trip. Because I'm clumsy. Yeah, that's true. I'm clumsy as hell. But yeah, I got balance issues, shit. And, and vertigo. And I got key or malformation. So, yeah, I get a little stumbly. But, bitch, I don't fall. Write that down. And I ain't damn sure I ain't falling for nothing you throwing around. Fuck out my face. Write that down, too. Anyway. Let me get on up off here. So I can post these videos share with y'all. Woo! Thought I lost my other phone there. Ah. Got him! I'll see y'all in a bit. I love those that love me so much. Okay? I need you to know that. I need you to know that. And I thank you for being you in the world where everybody don't mind doing a little acting for a couple of chump change. Okay, I need you to know that too. All right, I'm gone. I'll see y'all later.